before we go into the message for Julius Malema, I'd like you to please subscribe. That's the way that I will be able to get to more and more people. Please share it with others. Comment at the bottom. Tell me where you're from and what do you want to see done for South Africa and um, how you would like to be involved therein. Let's go into the message for Julius. I just want to greet everybody that is um, hearing me um, and watching me, whichever method, be it audio or be it on video. My name is Esther Bardenost and I love South Africa very much. And um, this morning he started with Julius Malema with me. So Julius, I want to speak directly to you. We need godly men in our country. We need examples. Um, I have been watching you for many years and I've been praying as well. But God is speaking loud and clear, very loud and clear. And, you know, the, the Lord spoke to Mohuin Mohuin about the Mordecai. And that's the Mordecai spirit that the Lord is calling Mohuin to stand up as a Mordecai. God is calling the men of South Africa to stand up as Mordecai as well. Um, I just want to mention that on the video you will see a, a stamp. When I recorded the video, because I was standing outside, um, I did not see the stamp on the recording until I carried it over onto my computer. And then I saw the stamp. Now for those who don't understand the spiritual world, God is bringing a message to Julius Malema there is a stamp on it and it is actually going across his face the whole time. So it might irritate you, but I understand exactly. It's not something that I instigated or put on. It just happened. Somewhere a trigger came on and it got placed onto my screen while I was recording um, within the camera. So I want you to take notice. And those that are prophetic, I believe you will get a message. The message that the Lord is giving me is a stamp. What does a stamp mean? A stamp means that you are going to send a message out. And normally a stamp, when you put it onto your envelope and you send it out, it gets stamped by the post office with a date on it. So God is stamping this message. This is what I'm getting. God is stamping this message for Julius Malema. It's not for anybody else because the stamp kept on going on his face. So the Lord said there is a time... And there's a date and there's a year that the Lord will speak to you. That was 2019 and now he's releasing it. So he's given you grace from that time period. And the grace is running out because God will not be mocked. And you'll hear that in the video as well. When it was released, um, when, when I captured it, it, I thought to myself, well, Lord, um, what is it going to look like to the world? And the Lord said, it doesn't matter what the world thinks. I'm sending a message to Julius Malema. And we need a man or a woman to stand up and say, we will build this nation, not destroy it. If you say to me, especially if you contact me and you're from the ANC, what has Ramaphosa done wrong? What has, if you're from the EF and you say, what has Julius Malema done wrong? Then I want to ask you, write down a few things, what they've done that's right in the eyes of God, because God is speaking here. And I'm just bringing the message. I don't want to talk too long. I just want to bring it out straight to you. Right at the end, you will see it cuts off. I was busy praying and it cut off. So I'm just going to pick up from there and I'm going to do the rest here. Um, so that, um, sure, and the light. It's interesting. <laughs> My camera light just went off. Oh, dear. I get the message loud and clear. Julius, I hope you get the message. Um. I didn't touch anything when I was praying for you. My camera came to an end when I started praying. And now I say I'm going to pray for you again. And the, this light that holds the camera has just gone. My ring light has just gone off. So I believe the message is loud and clear. God has spoken. Also further on in um, the video that I was running. God was speaking about um, Esther and Haman. And he speaks about the Esthers that will rise, whether they're male or female. The Esther anointing that they will stand in. The others will be a Mordecai anointing that they will stand up with. Different uh, positions. I'm going to 
um, Esther 4 verse 14, because it is 4 verse 14 time that the Lord is talking about, and we are in it. I'm just going to read from 12. What Tatash told Mordecai, what Esther had said, um, you need to read the story if you don't know it. Mordecai sent her this message. Don't think that just because you live in the king's palace, you're the one Jew who will get out of this alive. If you persist in staying silent at a time like this, help and deliverance will arrive from the Jews for the Jews from someplace else, but you and your family will be wiped out. Who knows, maybe you were made queen for just such a time as this. Esther sent back her answer to Mordecai, Go and get all the Jews living in Susa together. Fast for me. Don't eat or drink for three days, either day or night. I and my maids will fast with you. If you will do this, I'll go to the king, even though it's forbidden. If I die, I die. Mordecai left and carried out Esther's instructions. Mordecai was Esther's uncle, relative of hers. But I'm not going to bring the story of that. I'm just putting it together about the message that the Lord's giving for um, Julius Malema. Julius, you can decide if you want to be Haman or you don't want to be Haman. That means you can decide to follow Jesus or reject Jesus. There's many a man and woman that have not heard the message and they have been stubborn. Everybody out there, I hope you can see my face. I'm going to try and take a video of what I've got in the background here. So I hope you're all watching this. So if my face disappears, it means I'm trying to get myself synced in with whatever's in the background. And I think you can all see what's in the background. I've just got a little bit of sun in my face. So I'm just going to close my eyes for, so, for the second now. And yeah, it's interesting about the sun. And I just want to pray for Julius Malema. You've just proclaimed that you're a man of the soil. And um, if you're a man of the soil, it means that uh, the soil was created by God. So you cannot be a man of the soil if you did not know who your creator is. So I'm going to pray for you now. And I just wanted to say to you, Julius Malema, the soil does belong to God. And you were born in the soil, you were born on, in South Africa. So if you want to bring hate and violence and, uh, and um, discord and, and chaos and Marxism and socialism and society socialism or whatever you want to call it, um, science socialism like has been happening in Africa, Julius Malema, your friend is waiting for you. She loves you with the love of Christ. And I just want to bring you a lovely message that I want to pray for you. God did give me a dream of you. And I do believe that if you listen to the dream, you will hear what the Father wants for you. And I just want to swing this around. And I want to shine the radiation of the sun. And that is God. God made the sun. God made the soil. And God made you. So I just want to speak into your heart. And I want to speak into your life. And I want to say I call you out to be the biggest evangelist you've ever seen on the face of the continent of Africa. And that God will speak through your mouth. I pray that you will be a Joshua, and I'm just going to go straight into prayer. I thank you, Father, for a Joshua to arise. I pray that um, he be, will become like a Paul. When Saul was walking and he had a da Damascus encounter, I thank you, Holy Spirit, that this man that says he is a man of the soil, you created us all from the soil, but we don't have right to the soil. We are only enjoying the soil because it belongs to you, Father, because you created it. I thank you that Julius will hear my heart today and he will understand what I'm trying to say to him, that we need to bring love back into this country because love does conquer all. It is the time for Esther to arise, Father, and I thank you that either, either it doesn't matter if it's a man or a woman, Father, the Esther spirit will arise and the Esthers will speak up and the Esthers will be bold and the Esthers will love you, Father. And they will have unconditional love, but they will stand against Haman that is trying to rise and kill my people. Because who's my people? All the Jews and all the Christians in this land. We will not come against Israel. So Haman did come against the Jews. Um, we see even in our parliament leaders like whoever's got the Haman spirit is coming against Israel. It's not going to happen. Not on my time clock and not on any Christian's time clock. We stand up for the Jews and we see they have faults just like we do have faults. Each one of us has faults. None of us are exempt. 
But the sun is radiating today, so I'm actually quite excited because that's a rays of God's ray that is going to shine on South Africa. The sun, Jesus Christ, not the sun like in the sun, but this sun is being a rays that is giving us a prophetic word that the Son of God will shine upon Julius Malema's heart. Now, Julius, it all depends on you if you want to accept Jesus Christ and run this race with him. Because if you look at everybody in the Africa continent, the people that you actually said were the heroes are no longer the heroes. Um, many have passed away. Many have died. I'm not saying you're going to die, but we're all going to die. Even myself, each one of us. But my race will not go until Jesus makes the time for me that the race is done. It's a lot of noise out here, but it's fine. You will get the message. Jesus is asking you, what is your choice today? So the Lord is radiating down on this whole situation with me speaking to you today, Julius. And everybody that's against Israel and everybody that's against the God of the Bible. I just want to tell you something. This is a Christian country. We are rising. There are Esthers that are rising, male or female. It's the Esther anointing. It's the Esther spirit. We will speak up against Haman and Haman will be destroyed and you will see it. And it's not a joke. This is serious. If you laugh, be careful. Don't mock my God. He is alive. He created you. That's why you are calling yourself the man of the soil and everybody else that calls themselves a the man of the soil. God created us from dust. He said, I knew you before you were even born. So he knew you in your mother's womb. He knew you before you were in your mother's womb. And I just want to speak to you, Julius. Don't destroy this nation. Amalek, the Malachite spirit, tried to do it. Haman was a Malachite. He tried to... He was an Agakite, but uh, if you look at everybody, if they, they are linked to the Malachites, and God said he will destroy the Malachites himself. Don't come against the God of the Bible. Please, I ask you from the bottom of my heart, let us change South Africa together. Don't come against what God wants for this nation. We have a beautiful mantle, and the mantle over our country is really love. The mantle of our country is a true rainbow. It's not a gimmick rainbow where everybody's coming for the pot of gold in South Africa at the end of the rainbow. It is actually a rainbow which God gave to Noah, and that was a promise. There will not be a flood ever again. There is not going to be war here when God's children hear this message. We are not going to fight. We are not going to kill each other. We're not going to destroy each other because Esther, when Esther spoke, it happened. And if people stand together with Esther, which the nation did do, they stood with Esther and they believed her word and they said it is Esther time because it is the time. God said he has appointed us for a certain time and a certain season. There will be time for war and there will be time for peace. If you look at the Jews, they're a very, very good example. They don't believe in killing people, ach, murdering people because that's a planned method to kill and destroy people but they believe in protecting themselves and that's what we believe in as Christians as well we will protect ourselves but Julius Malema my thing to you today is I pray that your heart will change in love unconditionally because you weren't born in apartheid it did not affect you like it affected me I was born in 1961 if you stand with the God of the Bible you will have victory my biggest testimony Julius is I walked for you I prayed from the north up at um, but, um, Zimbabwe border, all the way through to Cape Town with my feet, praying that one day I will meet people like you that will surrender to Jesus. I walked from Botswana to Mozambique border. N1 and N4, I walked for Jesus. Why did I do that? So for the sole purpose is to reach people's hearts before it's too late. To, to reach them and say to them, yes, we are born of dust and we will go back to dust. But I want to ask you today, will you take your political party and not let it be self-gained? Or any other game for every, any other nation because no other nation that's pumping you with money is going to solve this nation's problem. Only God of the Bible is going to solve the nation's problem. And you're not going to last forever. So your journey is not finished here. I'm just going to go down to the soil. Your journey is not finished here, Julius Malema. Your journey is, and the soil is quite hard, but I'm going to try and pick it up. Just like this, you are like a seed. You're like a seed. God wants to use you. He wants to plant you in the soil. He wants to plant you in the soil so that you can sprout up. But you first have to die. Once you've planted a seed, it has to sprout up if it dies. But if it doesn't die to self, it will not sprout up. And the only thing that brings that sprouting up is the water. And the water is, is Jesus Christ. He is the only one that brings 
the true life, the true water, the true sustenance that we need. I just want to pray with you. Father, thank you for Julius Malema this morning because you handpicked him on this beautiful day. I was busy praying and it cut off. So I'm just going to pick up from there and I'm going to do the rest here. Everything that has held him in this position, just like Saul, he was persecuting God's children. And you came and you met with him and he had a Damascus encounter. I pray, Lord, that you will speak to Julius Malema in his sleep, give him visions, give him dreams, give him an encounter with you so that he will know this is not a joke, this is real. I pray that he will surrender and he will make this country a beautiful country once again. But not on his own, Lord, because in life itself we need one another. I pray that he will take off the mantle that's been put on him that has been evil, that has said to him, he can become the biggest dictator like Haman. We hates a certain race where he speaks with hate methods. Lord, you see everything that Julius Malema is busy with and the EFF, that whole party, Lord. Everyone in Parliament that is not serving the God of the Bible. I pray if there's any stronghold over Julius Malema, Lord, that you will show him what is holding him captive to all these lies. All these lies that he can't go forward. If you're living in the past, you're living for Satan. If you're living in the future, you're living for Jesus Christ. You cannot live in the past to build a nation. Help him with that, Lord. Help him to see that he cannot break a nation down more than build a nation up. And Father, if Julius Malema does not want to take this message, remove him from our government. We, as your children, will not allow ungodly ruling, no more Babylonian, no more Hamans, because in the Bible, Esther spoke to the king, and Esther spoke to you, Lord. That's why she fasted, and that's why she prayed. And tonight, Lord, I'm bringing Julius Malema, and I'm putting him in front of your feet, Lord, and I'm saying, Lord, we will not allow Hamans to rise in our nation. I pray right now, Lord, that if Julius needs to surrender to you, I ask you that he will go on his knees and he'll ask you to forgive him. And may he be an example to his family of a loving father like you gave me. A father that loved you, Jesus. What an example. May Julius leave the right legacy behind, not of hate and violence, but of love. I call him out, Lord, to be the biggest evangelist we've ever seen in South Africa. When he speaks, I pray that you will speak through his mouth or take him off the platform if he cannot surrender to your ways. He will be called of you because you called him. You made him, Lord, in your image. You made him in your image, each one of us. And you know the path that Julius is going to take. But I ask you, soften his heart, soften his heart, Lord, to see the destruction that is being made in our nation because of lies. Apartheid is past long ago. To heal this land, we need to go forward together. We need to love again, not hate for what happened in the past, but heal by going forward together in you. You're the only one, Lord, because you true love. You are true love. And I thank you for that. Amen and amen. I pray as well that you protect everybody that was praying with me, with your blood, Lord. Cover us with your blood, Lord. Thank you that we can pray for our nation, that we will see a new nation being birthed, with Jesus Christ being the forerunner of this nation, that we will stand up and say, Jesus is first in everything, government, schools, everywhere we go, in our homes. Thank you, Father, for your love tonight. Amen and amen. Julius, that's the message, and um, 
I hope that um, you make the right choices. Be blessed. God bless you. Love you. I wouldn't be doing this if I didn't love you.